brothers put on the side. It's Armageddon week and Armageddon good at writing these jokes. <laughs> I just can't deliver them very well. Uh, so the bombshell has well and truly hit. Let's remind ourselves of what went down in tonight's show. Daniel Foppart shit herself when she saw us come in. When I was talking to Winston, she was washing me. Oh my God, if looks could kill. What I like about Bianca, she's one of those people, she's, she epitomises the term, what you see is what you get. Their fate rests in what we decide. Bianca, yeah, she just said, I'll fuck anyone when I'm drunk. Quotation, slot pocket. This week, Danielle starred in a documentary called Webcam Girls at Your Service. It's just like um, like a webcam and you talk to people and stuff. I want to shoot myself in the head if I got a tweet like that from Louisa, knowing I did something like this in this house. Would you it. get Stephen out or would you get Kimberly? Because I don't think that'd be fair because Stephen's made my effort, okay? So it'd be Kimberly. Yeah, but has he done? I'm gonna dance, shake my hips like this, oh yeah. <laughs> Hello. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna put my big fat booty in your face, and I'm gonna oh. tap you around. She is a fake, and that's why I don't physically think that I could be mates with her. Because of the stigma that comes with webcam, it just sounds like, you know, I'm just prancing around in undies and showing my lady off. Ultimately, our, our decision needs to be favoured by the public. It's a good decision, mate. We have the power to just change our life. Keeps on giving the show. Giving and giving and giving. Um, OK, let's meet tonight's panel. First up is a woman who has been in over 25 pantomimes. Now, I used to have a phobia of pantomimes, but I went to a therapist, and now it's behind me! <laughs> See, I'm just not very good at it. Uh, please welcome the greatest page three model of all time. It's a beautiful Linda Lusardi. <laughs> Next up is a former model housemate who catwalked her way through to fourth place in Big Brother 2012. You can say what you like about her, just do not insult the Queen. It's the gorgeous Sarah McLean. <laughs> Finally, bringing gravitas to the panel with his hard-hitting journalistic background on Love Shaft and Suck My Pop. It's the very, very beautiful Will Best. Will Gravitas yep. Best. That's me. That's what I'm going yeah, for. Amazing. Um, OK, let's talk about tonight's show. Let me grab my little microphone. Uh, so we saw the housemates, uh, the new housemates bonding with some of the original housemates. How do you think the newbies are getting on, Linda? Well, you say about 25 pantomimes. I did two with Zoe, so I know her pretty oh, well. Yeah, oh, she okay. was the princess in um, Sleeping Beauty. But I think they've just fitted in really well and really easily, and they're getting on with everyone, and everyone's glad to have them there, I think. Well, until they find out that what they're doing oh. there this first week is yes. not going to be very pleasant. <laughs> um, Sarah, you have been in there. Um, how do you think the original housemates will feel with a new crop of people coming in? Well, we only had one person come in, yes. which was Becky. Yeah. Um, and she told us straight away that she wasn't allowed to hear anything from the outside world. Yeah. So I think if three had come in and they had, were allowed to watch, um, yeah, it, I think it would be terrible. Yeah. So, yeah. Not too pleasant. <laughs> uh, Will, how do you think they're getting on? I think they're, they're getting on... Well, it's, it's interesting seeing them in there has definitely, like, made the rest of the house kind of unite. There seems to be more of a bond, I think, when they mm. first came in because it's given everybody something to, like, look at. But I, I don't know, I think they're settling in nicely. I think Bianca would like to settle in a little bit more <laughs> to some of the specific other housemates. Yeah, and not just Winston. No, she'll do anything. No. She'll do anyone. Watch yeah. it, you lot. <laughs> you watch it, Will. What? <laughs> what do you lot think of our three newbies? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I think that's exactly what the house needed. Get someone in there to stir it up. Yeah, do you think Get that the do you think they're polling. settling in well? Is there anyone that you think No, I only have to look at you and you just go, no, or <laughs> yes, and I know that I have to come over. Information. Use it straight away. It's supposed to be Armageddon. Mix it up, stir it up. Well Bianca hasn't been worried about about well, using it yet. She's, yeah, she's, she's, she's mixing up the wrong things though, isn't she? Oh, so you think she's she's playing the wrong game yeah. with the wrong information? Yeah, you have to watch Bianca. I'll be honest. Like, I think she's going to open up. I think she's going to tell too you much. know, yeah, too much. But 
the, she's kind of funny, kind of funny the way she's spice up the house. They're having fun. You know, see like, yeah. tonight they're having fun. They're not always bitching all the time. It, well, fun, there was so a little bit of bitching tonight, but it is bit. nice to see fun, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the laughing is joking. Just having a laugh. Come on, it's I'm tired of the bitching now. Come on, we need to have a laugh. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're, in the, we're, like in the, we're past again. halfway. Yeah. So. so, but I can see Helen and um, Bianca and Tina up. I can see that. Okay. They were. I, I. I normally would just walk backwards, but I'm scared I'm going to fall over. Um, Helen and Bianca. There was. We certainly saw a little bonding moment or f a few moments going on in the garden tonight. Um, we saw moments, and we saw uh, Bianca's mates. Very <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> mate. Um, <laughs> Linda, what did you make to that little scene? Well, I'm, I'm glad that Helen didn't try to look shocked because obviously she's been in that position many times with other girls and things. <laughs> and um, so it was no shock to her. And I think they come from a similar working environment. So I think they will bond together. I think they will become a force to reckon with. But I do think Bianca's... She's just gone all guns a-blazing. And I think she'll settle down. And yeah. I think, you know, we will see the real person behind all this bravado. Yeah. It'll be, it will be nice to see another side to her. Yeah. I know she's only been in there a couple of days, but we have seen that she kind of extrovert. To, yeah, she wanted to come in with a bang, and she certainly did. Yeah. Will, would you like to have been in Helen's shoes? In, would I have liked to have been in Helen's shoes? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I don't... Stephen, yeah, no. Stephen, oh, Stephen yeah, then no. said, you know, she's the sort of woman that what you see is what you get, and I can see it, and I don't want it. That would be my job. <laughs> um, well, we had these two having a little... Um, a little chat if you can call it that about danielle in the toilet um can you see sara these two becoming firm friends i thought there might be a clash between these two initially um, when i saw bianca's profile um he, but they seem to be getting on quite well together yeah i think they will become friends but i think that's a bad thing because i think they're both really sh two strong characters right and they've both got complete bitch potential mm. so i think if they join up then there'll be trouble do you think they'll bring out the worst in each other um uh, I don't know. I mean, Bianca's fucking crazy. And she's like, first F bomb of the night. Thank you very much, Sarah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think they'll, as well, because they've both got the bitchness inside them, they're feeding off each other. Right. So when they're in the toilet, Helen's talking, then Bianca, yet again, I said, oh, well, she's fake, this, that. Yeah. Mm. And because Helen doesn't like Danielle already, and she, she thought that before, I think then they'll feed off each other. Okay, what do, what do you two think about these two and their friendship? Helen is using um, Bianca, I think, as a kind of pawn, and, and she's kind of getting her on side to kind of gang up on other people, I think, and, and it's going to get quite nasty. I think Helen's yeah. going to yeah. use her. I think her. she's met her match. With Bianca going in there, Helen's met her match, and they're going to be friends, but what, is B what if Bianca goes off with Ash? Aha, uh -huh, you see? So I, I don't think that's you know what I mean? There's going to be absolutely is, fireworks. I think Ash seems quite terrified. She, she, yes, oh, yeah, she wants Winston. Sorry, she wants Winston. Go near her. She, what, what, what? she wants Winston. She was like, I'll raise your cock. I think yeah, she'll settle, she, to be honest. She seems to kind of like everybody in yeah. there. But I think Helen's made friends with her because she does want her as an enemy. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's all, all you know, psychological with Helen. She said, I want that girl on my side. Bianca knows that yeah. Bianca's obviously watched, so Bianca knows that Helen's a strong one in the group, and obviously she's got to pass the final. So it's like, mm. Bianca, uh, Bianca might be playing a mind game as well, knowing that if she sticks with Helen, then... Okay. She isn't let's, stupid. Yeah. Let's, um, let's go back to the whole Ash uh, thing. She did say, you know, if I can't have Winston, I will have Ash. Uh, do, <laughs> I will. <laughs> uh, will, should Ash be worried? Um, do you think he would go there? Do you think she think meant he, it or was it a joke? I don't think he'd go there, but he might not have a choice. Yeah. I think it could be... She, she's, she's one of the scariest people in the world, maybe. <laughs> Fun though, right? Oh, great! Fun, yeah. To be fair, to be fair look, I'm being all like, no way. <laughs> they were very pert and they didn't move. And if they were, you know, if they were in your face, you probably, if you're a man, you might. You okay, know. let's move. <laughs> yeah. Let's you know move what on I mean? to. I've gone too far there. <laughs> uh, well, this show always goes too far. So um, I haven't been told down my ear I need to apologise for anything. Yeah. So I think you're okay. Good. I should though. Uh, <laughs> Got a girlfriend. Um, let's go. Um, let's go back to another new housemate. Let's talk about Pav. Um, he was having a chat in the garden with Mark about. Um, uh, whether you should, you know, who you should trust mm. in the house, whether people are just kind of using him for information or really want to know about, um, about themselves. Mark said, trust your gut. Is that important in there, Sarah? Um, yeah, trust your gut. But on the other side, let's be honest, if, if I knew, if I was in the, when I was in the house, if three people had come in and I knew that they had information from the outside, 
no matter what anyone says, you're going to try and warm to that person because you've, you've and been there for so long. And it's a natural thing probably to try yeah, and... Yeah, even things from family or whatever, like, no matter who you are, you are going to try and warm to them to get something out of them. And everybody in the house knows that they know things. Yeah. Um, so I don't, yeah, just now I don't think any, any of them should be trusted because they all have their own mind games going on. Yeah. Um, just for the fact that you're so secluded from the public. You'll you, you want to know something. Yeah. Will, is this a new alliance that's going to happen, do I, you think, these two? I don't think so, particularly. Pav seems very serious. Mm. He seems like a very serious man. Yeah. Um, and I, I think Mark, I can't imagine him and Mark being great mates, no. I don't, I don't think so. Is they have Pav one actually a ladies' man? He Apparently. He's it's done easy nothing. to say you are. He's you well, know, he has only been then, in there a day, though. I know, but... You, like, you need to give him a bit more time than that. Mm -hmm. I don't see him as a ladies' man. No. Yeah, well, we'll see when Bianca sets her sights on him, then we know <laughs> yeah. he can handle yeah. it. What about if they did become friends? Do you think Christopher... Lu um, <laughs> Lucinda? We could what? Lucinda Linda. Um, do you think Christopher should be worried? Could he lose his BFF in Mark? I don't think so, because I think Mark's just enjoying the fact there's new people and he's mm. getting to know them all. And, and, and he also is probably trying to find out a little bit of information about what the public think about him. But I think he'll go back to, for, to Christopher. But Christopher should perhaps spread his wings a bit and, yeah. and try and make friends with a few more people so he's not so dependent upon Mark. And very quickly, what do you think of Pav? Far too quiet. I mean, yeah. it's the same VT. If he goes Friday, he's not going to get missed. Yeah, Anybody liking Pav? No. Are you having a joke? No. Oh my goodness. Boring. He just needs to talk to Chris. Little Chris is his friend. And then I think he'll have a better conversation with Chris. I mean, come and Mark, he's just all eyebrows and hairspray. So, just, you know. Pam I like a bit of hairspray and I like yeah. eyebrows. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, still to come, Dr. Pam will be here to talk through Big Brother's Armageddon and the impact the new housemates have already made. But on Friday, one of our newbies will be evicted. Here are the numbers you need to save your faith. This week, Bianca, Pav and Zoe all face the public vote. Who stays, you decide. From a landline call, 090 58, and add the number of the housemate you want to save. From a mobile, call 65058, and add the number of the housemate you want to save. For Bianca, add 17. For Pav, add 18. For Zoe, add 19. Remember, it's a vote to save. Mobile and BT landline votes cost 50 pence. Other landlines may vary. Or you can vote via the new Big Brother app where two votes will cost you 99 pence. Voting closes in Friday's live show. Votes cast after the lines close won't count. You can find terms on the Big Brother website. The show that's a lot like Bianca. We are loud, we're outrageous, and we've both got our knockers. <laughs> Not these ones. Uh, right, would you like to see how the housemates have been getting on today? Yeah. Yes. Here we go. Yes. I'm going to go with someone who's a bit more blunt and upfront and honest, and Bianca has stated yeah. she ain't no fucking virgin. Yeah, but you know what annoys me? That was what she said. Yeah, what annoys me is if that's the case and they see someone pretend a falsehood at it. Yeah. During question time yesterday, why did Pav turn around and say he'd get rid of me? Because I said I'd get rid of him. All right, it's fine. Do you know what I mean? It's it not tit for tat, is it? No, but it doesn't make sense. Literally, like, every single day I wake up, I feel more and more confident to just do what I want to do and not give a shit about anyone else's feelings anymore. Oh, that's happened to me as well. Because I'm starting to get to that thing where I'm really taking into consideration everyone else. I've tried to be courteous and polite. I've it's done that. It's fucking running out of work. Listen, hello, with regard to that, she said, or Daniel was like, oh my gosh, did you hear the weird noises last night? And then Ashley said, oh yeah, I think it was coming from like... Who said, did you hear the weird noises? Daniel. Daniel. And now she's like, yeah, I think it was coming from... Like Helen and Ash's direction, I said no because I would have heard it. I sleep right next to them, and she's like, no, it's definitely coming from them. I think it was coming from Ash, and I was like, hmm. Now that I think about it, he does breathe really heavily. Maybe it was that. Like, yeah, it's just the conversation that they have when you walk off at night. Yeah, because they're trying to say, fucking sleep in my house. Like, they were doing this. They were doing yeah. that. No, it's all going back to like it was last week. I thought there was harmony coming to the house. Uh, right. With Armageddon hitting the house, I'm in need of someone to help me make sense of it all. Uh, and I am in luck, uh, because for the first time this series, I am reunited with the lovely Dr. Pam Spur. <laughs> so, three 
eight brand new housemates have been introduced to the world of Big Brother. Um, what do you think of them um, as a threesome? Well, I think it's brilliant. The evil genius of Big Brother has cast in three completely different personalities. And that's created so much paranoia in the house. Is that needed as well, do you think? Uh, what, paranoia? No, three <laughs> different personalities. Yeah, three very different personalities, yes. Instead of like sending in three totty or whatever, yeah. they've chosen three very different characters. It's got, you know, sort of Ashley saying, oh, they're here for two weeks just to mess with our heads. And Stephen thinking, yeah, they're here to mess with our heads. And we've got Marlon in a separate private house. You know, so all those sorts of things create paranoia when you've got different personalities you can't assess quickly. Um, what do you think of them individually? Let's start with um, Bianca. We could spend the whole chat on Bianca. Now, we could spend a whole show on Bianca. Now, she's obviously a classic extrovert, as we, you know, we think of them larger than life. She's an attention hoover. She hoovers up all the attention. And she also is more complicated than just being a straightforward extrovert because all that sexual bravado, it's all a big defense mechanism. When she says to Winston, I want to ride your cock a doodle doo, she is talking about, you know, just really, she just wants to be in his face so that no one gets to know her so that kind of defense mechanism actually stops people from getting to know the real her what do you think the real her stuff. is then well i think it's quite manipulative because some of the other stuff i've seen is the way she's when when it's just the three newbies together she's been leading the conversations about who they should choose to evict on friday she's also been feeding all this stuff about danielle she can barely contain it that she wants to kind of increase her own social value by exposing Danielle and how we see her on the outside world. Mm. So she's got this huge manipulative streak going on. Um, and what about Pav? What are your thoughts on him? Well, Pav, oh, come on. VT, talk the talk. Let's see the walk. You know, it's just not happening. <laughs> Well, but again, it's only been 24 hours. What I have seen with him, big ego, but low confidence. So there he is in the diary room saying, I wish I had the power to evict the person. He doesn't even want to share it with the other two newbies. Mm. Um, and yet, when we saw him enter, you know, he was certainly not confident. His body language lacked any sense of sort of strength and power. And instead, what he does best is like when he has a one-on-one -on -one conversation like he did with Mark. And then we start seeing where he's inter introverted, where he can come out a bit gets a little bit of confidence in those one-on-one -on -one situations. So what strength does he have do you think? Well I think the strength is he's actually quite smart he's not emotionally smart like he wouldn't have a high em sort of emotional intelligence but I think he's actually you know like Chris he's quite intelligent if he sits back and does the observing he said he was going to do mm. then perhaps we will see some smart moves again maybe manipulative moves. I think as someone said the other night though you know it, it's it's maybe good to sit back and not say very much but we also need to see you do something. Exactly, you've got yeah. to strike that balance. Yeah. And what about Zoe? Well, I think she's found that balance. Now, she does have, clearly she'd be quite high on the extroversion trait, um, and, but she also would be quite high on the empathy trait. So she, she's gone in there, big character, but she's also respectful to the other housemates who've been there. So unlike, you know, when, when you know, we see Bianca sort of trampling over everyone and being that sort of attention hoover, mm. um, Zoe seems to find the balance between being outgoing and also uh, she has probably very quite high social skills. So she's got the right sort of attributes, which will make her quite popular. So she gives enough, but she can control exactly. it. Yeah. Um, so our original housemates have been in there for about six weeks now. How do you think they're coping with three new people? Well, when it comes to territoriality, we have two levels. We have personal space, which we all talk about personal space. If I hopped over there for our interview right next to you, you'd think, oh, my personal space is no, invaded. No, come on, Pam. <laughs> you can absolutely sit next to me. It's fine. Thank you for the invitation. And then we have what's called shared space. The house is the shared space doesn't mean we don't feel territorial about it. And what we see is three primal modes of behavior. We see the, the people who attack, we see the people who negotiate, and we see the people who retreat when it comes to territoriality. Okay, so who's showing signs of retreating? Well, the key people who are showing those signs are, of course, Chris and Danielle. When you Danielle looks really worried, doesn't she? Well, she had that, that other level, of course, of being worried about how much do they know about me, how much will they expose me to the rest of the housemates. But just naturally, she didn't want the boat rocked. As she told us last week, she was going to make the impact now. That steals her thunder, having these three people. So she mm. and Chris, you know, they, they disengaged, they absorbed, 
reserved, you know, and they've been doing that ever since. They've had very defensive body language whenever they're around the newbies. They're kind of closed down. Yeah, Chris isn't very and, happy. Is yeah, and we're seeing them regroup, you know, and they're, you know, Danielle had actually nominated Chris on, on Sunday saying that, oh, they're not really very close anymore. But now we but see now them regroup, the three of them, yes, because, you know, with Ashley, they, they've, they are kind of retreating. Um, who is using negotiation? Uh, well, Stephen, <laughs> I don't as really, always, I don't really like to give him credit for that. But the thing is, he didn't sort of um, jump straight in with the newbies, but he kind of started engaging with them, chatted to, to a lot of them, and then, of course, when Bianca started chatting orgy. What does he do? He puts on the Mr. Loverman persona and goes, yeah, you're my type of person. I'm going, what? Well, you're a type of person to shout orgy the first yeah. time you meet them. Come on, Stephen, what was Kimberly thinking? Although he did tell us about his fetish, about always wanting to 24 hour be sex. doing it constantly. He's no Hugh Hefner, I'm absolutely <laughs> sure of it. But the thing is, you know, he was there ready to kind of negotiate some sort of, you know, friendliness and engaging with them. Okay, so uh, retreat, negotiation and attack. Of course. I think I know who you're going to mention for attack, but why don't you tell us anyway? It's Bianca, of course, because she just stormed in, trampled over the house as if it was her own, got on with the sexual bravado, using her sexuality to kind of get the attention, and she just doesn't have a sense of of balance again so she doesn't have what Zoe has and she so for territoriality because underlying it I think it's fear and just like I've said about Helen in the past her anger is a defense mechanism I think her just being in everyone's faces is all about inside she's probably you know deeply fearful of the situation okay and we have seen her in all her glory and in action tonight so uh, let's just have a quick recap I'm gonna show you my juicy oh, boobs right there my boobs are in your face, I'm coming in closer. Can you see the weave on my hair? <laughs> the weave on my hair. I can't I want to say your boobs. Oh, yeah, Zoe's the fucking best. This is bad. Tonight, this is bad. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to put my big fat booty in your face. And I'm going to oh. touch the ground. Touch the ground. Touch the ground. Touch the ground. <laughs> obvious what are you getting from that well i was going to say have you picked up some new moves from mr willis tonight from that no! <laughs> oh my goodness it's so late by the time we finish i just want to go to bed and sleep well it's no surprise this is exactly what bianca said she's gonna do and unlike so many people on their vt who just downright lie she's actually done it and she's going to keep doing it i think um but what's the surprising reaction is helen because she, there was real conflict between pleasure and kind of quite enjoying it. And, you know, I think as Linda said, obviously he's maybe been there in those sorts of situations. And I keep, sorry, I'm watching it as you're talking about it. She just looks like she's having the best time. <laughs> it looks like the best night she's had since she's been there. Exactly, but there are a few moments in her body language right now, we're not seeing it, that, but, but early in the, in the strip, where she actually looks quite defensive. So there is that kind of, what boundary do I set here? How far do yeah. I go with this? So. I, I suppose it's one of those things, isn't it, where you um, you want to have fun and there's new people around, yeah. but it's like I am slightly feeling a little bit awkward. And with everybody on the outside thinking, what have you perhaps done in the past and whatever. And so I think she's quite aware of maybe how far I should go with that kind of thing. Okay, Pam, thank you so much. <laughs> Pam Spur, everybody. <laughs> Join me after the break where we'll be bringing you all the latest news from the house. Plus, we'll be hearing from the new housemates nearest and dearest. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Welcome back to Big Brother's Bit on the Side, where the arguments in the house have diminished, possibly due to Bianca bringing in her two bouncers. <laughs> it's better than the beginning of the show, jokes, yeah? A boob gag always goes down well. Uh, now, we've got some people on the line who know our housemates better than anyone. First up, we have Bianca's mum, Lena. Lena, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you? Are you swimming? <laughs> are you there, <laughs> Lena? Yeah, I am, yeah. Okay, good. Sorry, the, the sound went a bit funny then. So, um, so your daughter, she got straight in there with Winston. Um, is she usually that forward? Yeah, she is. Re <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, she is. Are we going to see her be more forward, do you think? Um, I think she'll just get naughtier as it goes on. 
She gets naughtier. Yeah, but not not probably not as bad as she was at the beginning. Oh, so so she's peaked on on night one, um, and and maybe we'll see her kind of come down a little bit, level out, yeah, and then yeah, maybe think, get naughty again. Yeah, I think she'll calm down a bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, what happens if Winston isn't interested? She's kind of put it out there. She said she loves that kind of Essex boy who's well groomed. She certainly let him know how she felt on the first night. Um, if he doesn't uh, want to go there with her or isn't interested, will she be bothered? No, not at all. Really? Yeah, she's quite a confident girl. So oh. she's you know, she it wouldn't bother her at all. Okay. Um she she is she's she's a fun loving gal. She is full of energy. Um, oh yeah, definitely. She's is, always been like that. We were just talking to um to Dr. Pam Spur, I don't know if you heard it, and she was saying that, you know, she is this kind of larger than life character, but she thinks all the kind of sexuality with her is a defence mechanism maybe for for something. So is there another side to her that we haven't seen yet? Uh, she has got a serious side, yeah. But um she still she's still sort of like the same, but um she's like she's quite a caring person. Yeah. And um you know, she, would, she wouldn't want to offend anybody. OK, but... and do you think we'll see that side to her as well? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. OK, Lena, thank you very much for being on the phone tonight. That's OK. See you later, bye. Thank you, bye. Um, OK, let's go over to line two. We've got Zoe's mum, Tracy, on the phone. Tracy, are you there? Hello, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> is this Tracy or is this Zoe? <laughs> It is Tracy. You sound just like her. Everybody says that. It's unbelievable. <laughs> um, okay, so listen, we all know that she's been on Pop Idol before. She's kind of, you know, in the in the media world. Do you think this gives her an advantage in this situation? No, I don't really at all because it's a different show. It's a different concept. Pop Idol was what thirteen years ago. Things yeah. are different now. Uh, she was only 16 at the time. She's a grown woman now. Yeah. So I think it gives the um, public a chance just to see her personality more now, which is great. <laughs> do, you, do you think she's probably um, slightly more savvy, though, in the way of, you know, she's, she's been in the game for, as you said, like 13 years. So she knows how things work maybe better than some of the other housemates. So do you think she'll know maybe not to get too paranoid about certain things or not to read into certain things too much, as whereas the others may do? No, I don't really think so, because I know she's been in the game, but being in the house is a totally, a totally different way, isn't it? I mean, even when you watch Celebrity Big Brother, you, you don't know how it's going to affect you when you get in there. Yeah. So, okay. no, I don't. Okay, uh, Tracy, thank you for being on the phone. That's okay. Thank Bye. you, Anna. Bye. Bye. Doesn't she sound like her? She sounds just like her. And finally, on line three, we've got Pav's sister, Rav. Rav, are you there? Hey, Emma. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Now, let's talk about your brother. He said that he sussed everybody out. <laughs> um, how do you think he's getting on? Um, I think he's really excited to get to know everybody. And um, in the diary room, he said that he wants to see how their personalities work and what they're like. So I think even though we watched it, he's still trying to figure them out. And I think, he, you know, he's kind of figuring Helen out, as he said, you know, in the bedroom last, late last night. Yeah, do, so, um, do you think he'll be able to get his point across with the other two girls? Because they, they're quite strong in their opinions, I think, and, and, you know, they have to make that decision together. So do you think he, he will make his point heard and, and be able to um, kind of steer people to his way of thinking? Because he did say he's very good at that in his profile, VT. He did, he did. But I, th I, I think, firstly, he does, he's coming across as a little bit nervous, and I think it's probably the overwhelming, the whole thing. Yeah. Like you said, you know, Zoe's got an experience in this. Pav really hasn't. You know, he's just a normal 22-year-old boy who's gone in. So um, I, I do think there's a lot more of Pav to see yet. OK, Rav, thank you very much. Um, OK. OK. <laughs> Are you OK? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just also wanted to say that, you know, you need to keep him in. He is really funny, he's mischievous, he's cheeky, and we haven't seen enough of him. He hasn't had enough airtime. All we see is Bianca and it going on about sex, and that's not what we want to see. We want to see Pav. Rav, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. She's got a cheeky little plea in there as well. Um, that is enough chat about our new housemates. Uh, shall we see what's happening in there? Yeah. Here we go. Man. Think of all the weird shit that's happened, Winston. It could do anything. Everything they've watched. Ashley's seen some. What did you see? 
No, on the website, whenever I came in, I read about it, and they were saying about the house and how it's clinical and like straight lined, uncomfortable. And then he oh, says about how gosh. the power housemates will be choosing who's up for nomination, who gets rewarded, who gets punished, and, and the last bit was and who gets evicted. Well, and effectively, what, that is who gets evicted. Nobody's, yeah, no, no power housemates actually chose who's going to be evicted yet. Everything for three happened. new people to come in, and get on great with everybody, and then yeah. two days later they have to evict somebody that's been <gasps> here for six weeks. Shit! What are you doing? Oh, I've just got a psychic feeling. What are you doing? 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 They didn't. They just said that we are all Face up for eviction. eviction. We're all facing eviction. It could have fuck all to do with the public. They could be the public, them three. They could quite easily choose one of us to be evicted. Emma didn't mention oh, the public the or the lines. I do love that he went, oh, I've had a psychic feeling. And he said exactly the same thing that Ashley just said like 10 <laughs> seconds yeah. before. It's like, they're going to pick who's going. <laughs> Psychic feeling was someone else's idea. <laughs> uh, anyway, good on Ashley though, right? She is savvy. Um, so the latest Big Brother recruits have been settling into life in the house, but there are some housemates who they've not quite connected with just yet. So let's talk about them. Firstly, Danielle. Things got slightly awkward in tonight's show when uh, talk turned to Danielle's webcam antics. Um, how do you think she handled herself, Linda? I think she handled it really well because I watched the web webcam girls and she didn't yeah. really do anything. And I, I don't know that she is a. She wore her riding hat very well. I mean, she might have done a few saucy pictures, but that doesn't mean she's not a yeah. virgin and she doesn't have her beliefs. I yeah. think they're all jumping the gun a bit, and I think that Bianca's been very cruel to have thrown all that in the mix because there none of them are going to trust her now, and she's yeah. going to be ostracised. Mm. Yeah, um, Pam, what did you make to um, to Danielle's reaction when everything was brought up? Well, I thought she handled it really well, and what was really interesting to watch was Stephen, when he and Kimberly were sort of grilling her, he was absolutely watching every move. He was trying to detect any lies from her, mm. if she was underplaying what she'd done on the webcam. And it's interesting to see him actually look so Machiavellian, because normally we do see that kind of negotiator side, you know, he's trying to be a bit charming with everybody. But he let the side, the, you know, his guard drop when he was talking to Danielle about it. What, um, okay, well, should we talk to someone who knows her very, very well? Uh, we've got our mum, Joan, on the phone. Joan, are you there? Good evening, Emma, and everyone else. Good evening, Joan. Good evening, Joan. Good evening Emma. Hi. So, so, listen, everybody is speculating about Danielle and her webcam. Um, so, can you set the record straight for us? Uh, I, I watched the documentary the other night, and I think quite a few people in here did, but there will be people at home who didn't see it and will be as suspicious as the housemates were about Danielle and her webcam. Okay, I can understand that. Um, well, are you a bad person? But, you know, because you talk to people on the phone and receive payment. You know, is there a problem with the, web, the webcam? Is it pornography? No, it definitely isn't. It's quite innocent. Um, or I would ask myself, um, I being naive, um, we all knew about the webcam. Um, it was an opportunity for Danielle to promote herself um, and it allowed her an income to continue with her writing lessons um, and the other interests that she has. In fact, Emma, to be honest, it was so irrelevant. It wasn't even mentioned. Okay, um, and how do you think she's getting in this, uh, getting on in there since the new housemates arrived? Um, I think that um, she finds difficulty um, in adapting to new situations, and I think it definitely takes her quite a bit of time. I think she will adapt, but I think it's just going to take her that bit longer. Okay. Uh, Joan, thanks for being on the phone tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, Bye. Emma. Bye. Um, okay, let's move on to Chris. He said um, that he felt they were back to square one with the introduction of the new housemates as uh, ta uh, talk turned back to sex. Um, Jinky's got a point, Will. Does, do, do you feel like the kind of conversation and everything that... Had, kind of been repaired mm. in the last six weeks has just gone straight back to the beginning well but that i think that's just the way things happen anyway these things go in cycles you see that every series <laughs> like it'll go through phases people in groups sort of do that i think chris is just worried because maybe the way it was settling down was a chance for him to come out of his shell a little bit 
and he can't now do that with with Bianca in the house. I don't think he's just too. He's she's too, she goes against everything that he seems to sort of claim that he is and stands for. I think. Yeah. He's well, freaking out. Um, Linda, what do you think? Do you uh, do you kind of feel sorry for him that he's back in that situation, or you know, a little, a little does bit, he need to just suck it up and get on with it? I think he needs to get on with it, but I think he's he's so bored in there that I think he's had enough of it, and he's now got to make the effort to get to know three other people that he really wouldn't mix with in the outside world, yeah. and he can't be bothered. Yeah. I think he's really just down on himself and and down on everything that the big brother's thrown at him. Yeah. Um, you know, he felt quite comfortable before with everybody, and now he's got... He, yeah, he kind yeah. of finally got there, hadn't yeah. he? And he finds it difficult to make new friends, I think, because he's not one for pushing forward and shoving yeah. off. I and just don't think he actually likes any of no, them. No, he doesn't. Just, it's like that simple. It's not like he's got... He just doesn't really like them. But it's part of the experience, isn't it? You know, yeah. that's what we want. We want different people with different backgrounds and different yeah. interests and, and different, you know, intelligence levels and different conversations and... And you know, he wanted to be in there, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. in a way, you've just kind of got to so get on quiet with it. That I, I can't believe that the other housemates haven't sort of picked him, but he goes under the radar all the time. You know, they wouldn't even think about evicting him. Yeah, it's just little Chris. Yeah, yeah. Little Chris. just like he, little I think Chris. he'd be delighted to be evicted because it doesn't look like he's having a very nice time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't under, underestimate boredom. You've absolutely hit it with boredom. Yeah. Boredom depletes your emotional reserves. You think about your emotional bank balance. It starts out quite high when you go in there. But with someone like Chris, just little bits have been chipped away because he just really has no one to relate to. You feel very you isolated. Feel, uh, yeah, you feel isolated. And it yeah. can completely change yeah. your mood and it can get you really depressed. And he's got um, no one of the same feeling... intelligence level in there to have a conversation. Yeah, well, I think he Pav might be. It's yeah. not yeah. Christopher Pav seems, to be... seems to be able to have quite a good conversation with him. And, you know, Ashley seems like a bright girl as well. I know she's oh, Ashley, only 18, yeah. as everybody yeah. says. There's different but, forms of intelligence but, anyway. Yeah. It's not like... Exactly. Yeah. It, it's, you know, finding common ground, mm. isn't it? And just, sometimes and when you just... get knocked, when you get in that place, it's hard to get back up. And then obviously three new people have come in and he doesn't know them. Yeah. So he's maybe just lost himself a little bit. Um, let's move on to Ashley. Um, they said that they feel like she observes them quite a lot. Um, did you ever feel that with anybody, Sarah, when you were in there, that, that there were people just watching you, watching everything you were doing? Uh, <laughs> I can't really remember now, but uh, yeah, sometimes. Look, <laughs> look, A did that a little bit. I kind of thought when, when I was talking or something, he'd be sick. Because <laughs> you are yeah. hot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but no, I think sometimes as well when you go in there, like for instance me I'm really loud in real life and I'm quite a big character mm. however when I went in there I was quite quiet for the first couple of weeks just because no one's ever been in a situation like that before and there's like what eight well when I went in 18 huge characters yeah so it's hard to get your words in so even though she does sit back and watch it might just be because sometimes she literally doesn't have anything to say uh, well do you think she needs to kind of um just get in there with them uh, when they walked in the other night she was so excited oh she mm. seemed to be so excited she yeah. got up she went straight over to them she was like yeah new housemates yeah now she's kind of sitting back again and watching yeah but that does seem to be sort of her default setting I think she she just wants to suss them out but she's so young that like you know, she's I think clever, though. she's yeah, she's definitely she's wise clever. beyond her years. But yeah, I, I think mean, she I mean, just lots of people out. talk about how young she is, and yeah. then you know, lots she's of other people have age. said, you know, she's she's behaving more mature than some yeah. women. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Big time, clever big time. girl. The yeah. Thing what, what, what? She has a mature head on her. Yeah. Old head on young shoulders. Yes. <laughs> That's what my mum says about my husband. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, still to come, find out who's having trouble keeping trim down below. <laughs> First time I've read that link. I can't believe what I just said. See you in a bit. <laughs>
Winston, 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 he's hard too. He's hard too. He's from Essex. He talks like this, but he's lovely. He's really charming. He's a good boy. I like his hair today. It's floppy, floppy everywhere. It's Winston today. He looks good today. Wait, 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 wait. Speechless. <laughs> Somebody just rapped down my ear. I went split, 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 speechless. Um, at 11.26 this morning, the issue of personal grooming was a hot topic in the bedroom as Helen revealed that she might need to pay more attention to her lady garden. I haven't shaved properly down there. Do you think people will be able to see pubes when I'm walking? <laughs> we'll see. Nah. Nope. Can you see a gap when I walk past you, Bianca? No, babe. Right. I'll leave them. No. They I like them shorts. Do they the shorts I gave you? No. I'm not fucking... They give me, like, like them big shorts. fucking fishing pants. Do they? I'm not wearing them today. No. Uh. Your hair on your legs grows in the sun, doesn't it? I think so. Was it? Well, yeah, I shaved my legs like two days ago and they're now hairy again. Cute. <sighs> now, we all know that if you uh, trim it, it grows back thicker, right? Yeah. So I say, let the little buggers run free. Just let it all hang out. Um, and finally, at 12.36 this afternoon, Big Brother set our new housemates for task. They picked Christopher to be their secret mole and listened in to the juicy gossip he managed to get. Yeah, I'm convinced they're watching little nuggets of us every now, oh, and, every now and again. And like, they'll never, they'll never admit it, but like, even look at how long like they're in there for. That's a banquet. What are they in there plotting and scheming? <gasps> Jesus, that's right. They're still in there. Of course Don't they are. They're that. in there for ages yeah, every time. Not, Lunch what, doesn't Bianca's take that not long. not acknowledged me or wanted to talk to me this morning. Has she not? No. Who? Bianca. Bianca. So oh, I think yeah, they are watching. Really yeah. I don't. I can't apologise for it because um, as soon as I see someone stirring, it's too late in the day. I can't be bothered to build a, a relationship or friendship or show respect if you're not showing respect the second you come in. Mm. I was, I was so saying important. that in the day room about because um, obviously I spoke to Pav and Zoe a bit more, and I says like the two of them have come in and mm. they've really made an effort. Zoe's always oh, really, really nice girl. I really like her. Yeah. Winston, what were you chatting to Bea about last night? Were you having a little cosy chat with her last night? Last night? Do you like her, Winston? Yeah, just, huh? Well done. Like well done, Ashley. She's not really my type of girl, to be honest with you. Yeah. She's uh, a bit fucking, she's a bit forwards. Yeah. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. she's forwards. That's like, it. I'd rather do the chasing, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now she knows that Winston likes to do the chasing, you think she's going to back off a bit? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is today's news. Right, let's head up to the reality gallery. Uh, Linda and Will, what gossip you got for us? Well, Bianca revealed to Danielle this afternoon that she hopes to give up her stripping prof profession when she leaves the house. Did she say what she would like to do instead? No, I don't know. What, don't what know. do you think she'd be good at? Horse riding mainly, isn't it? <laughs> you can do no, both. No, Bianca. Oh, Bianca, sorry, well, she'd probably be good at horse riding too. Yes. I imagine. What else you got, Will? <laughs> um, I've got something... It should interest you, um, Emma. Zoe admitted that her first sexy dream was over Matt Willis. I no. mean, this is, I'm, I'm, read, I'm just reading. I'm just reading what I've been given. Ashley then admitted she cried her eyes out when Busted split up, but we all did that. Oh, so. I cried too. Yeah. yeah thanks, guys. <laughs> and Mark and Christopher. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, one more. Bit more. Go on. Do another. Should one, I do Linda? another one? Mark and Christopher had a heart to heart about relationships, and they decided they're not going to do anything until they get out of the house. Who was that? Mark and Christopher. Oh, good. That's nice. Thank you very much. Run. Run, I've got to be super quick run, now because Linda just took Linda some of your seconds. Stole my time. I know, and it, it's it's not kind of your debut, but you know, no. he's put his posh shirt on and everything. Well, I um, knew you were trying to embarrass me. In front I of the know mates. this is about online, but I have yeah. to ask you this question. Oh no! Did it's you really your ear, buy your girlfriend a Hoover today? It's for a graduation, yeah. <laughs> It's what Do you not know? It's, what it's, she it's wanted. a cardinal sin to buy your other half a, a cleaning appliance. Well, I'd already bought her a blender. You're basically saying, a, cook and for me and chopper. clean. Well, she does it anyway. This is just helping her along. You've got 10 seconds. Uh, go to the website. It's really good. Bigbrother.channel5.com. Yeah. For lots of great stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, and search for BB UK for Instagram and Vine. Okay. How about that? Is that all right? That was amazing, Rob. Amazing. You're such a bad boyfriend. Yeah. Um, uh, that's all we've got time for tonight. Thanks to all of my guests. Joining me tomorrow at Tau is uh, Lauren Goodyear. Plus, we've got big brother favourites, Luke Marsden and Liam McGough are going to be here. It's going to be very hard to get a word in edgeways, I'd imagine. Have a great night. Good night. Mm -hmm.